Welcome to Relationships Through the Looking Glass. You have now entered the in-betweens. The series of episodes between seasons that focus on absolutely anything. I really don't know what might come up in these topics. But what I do know, the content you'll listen to, you'll definitely find something that you can utilize in your own relationships. So sit back and relax let's get started. All right, everybody. Welcome to episode nine of Relationships to the Looking Glass, our in-between element. Um, we got one more of these to go. One more of these to go before we jump off into season three, where we got some big changes coming, but all good, all good. So without further ado, this evening, this episode, we're going to be talking about the times in life where people gave us sound, good advice. And we did the exact opposite and what happened because of that. Um, so it should be interesting. And tonight we have Chris, uh, you, you heard from him on our last episode, which was freaking hilarious. I think I've listened to that like three times. Um, Keisha, Nicole and Darius from what the ship podcast is, um, on the mic with us tonight too. So we're just going to jump on into this. I mean, I'm not going to freaking labor this anymore with talking about what we're doing and all that great stuff. I will ask everybody though, how, how you're doing, how, how was your week? So I'm gonna start with Chris. Like, how was your week, Chris? Uh, week was pretty good. Uh, here in Virginia at all, not all four seasons. We had three or four seasons so far this year. So hopefully that's not a telltale sign of what's to come in 2022. Uh, well, I mean, that's it. That's all you got. Nothing else happened this week. No highlights. No, no, no. I want no highlight. It was just uh, crazy weather. Dealing, okay. <laughs> dealing with the crazy weather in Virginia, which is crazy, more crazy than normal. I miss it. Saying a lot. Which is saying a lot. Yep. How about you, Keisha? <laughs> How was your week? Um, this week have it, it's been interesting. I actually was told that I had close contact with a coworker who tested positive for COVID. Um, I went to get tested. My results is not back yet. I feel fine. So I'm just enjoying the time off of work. So that's what's up. Enjoy that yeah. time. Enjoy that time. How about you, Nicole? How was your week? Uh, well, I'm in Colorado, so we got slammed with snow, one storm, uh, and then prepared for the second, but I have been contributing to, some of the cleanup efforts and volunteer efforts with the Boulder fires. So um, that has been kind of a challenge, emotionally taxing for sure. Absolutely. And um, everybody listening to send prayers that direction because there's been evacuations, right? A lot of people have lost everything. I mean, from snowing, getting snowed in to now fat fires, it, 2022 is starting to look rather interesting. And then another storm on top of that. So it was like fire, storm, a little bit of sun, and then storm again. So the people are definitely trying to pick up their pieces and, you know, make sense of what happened. And yeah, it's, it's a challenge. Well, we are sending prayers your way. Um, and just make sure you're taking care of you while you're helping everybody else. Make sure you're taking care of you. <laughs> right. Darius, my favorite Darius on the planet. How was your week? Oh, I, uh, my week has been great. Actually, I don't want to be all sad. I got a new partnership, so you know, I'm doing I things. I'm working that. in I saw that. Awesome. Look at you. When I oh, yeah. up, be like you I when I grow up. Shoot, I want to be like me when I grow up. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. I, I decided this year that I'm a, um, I'm gonna just start shooting for the moon, and. Whatever comes our way, we gonna I'm gonna take it if it makes sense for us. So this makes sense for us. It's a good deal. Um, it's just good to be in a position to be able to do more and uh, grow the platform to have other people come on and do our thing. That's awesome. Well, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. So hey. here we go. We about to jump into this. <laughs> Chris, tell me a time where somebody gave you some sound advice, some sound advice, and you thought you just knew every damn thing and did the opposite. Um, I would probably have to say 
um, this is um, well before I um, before I was married and for premarital counseling and a couple of people had mentioned it and I was under the impression I, I was under the impression that counseling was for when there was issues and when it was a problem and I was like well me and her are good we don't have any issues everything is fine and but everyone was like no you still should do it and I fought it and we still got married and I believe if we had had the premarital cancel, maybe not saying it, maybe everything would have worked, but maybe it would have uh, alleviated some of the issues that came up down the road. And now I understand the, re the purpose of cancel. Okay. So mm -hmm. if somebody asks you right now, like, I think I want to marry this person. They're like so amazing. They make me so happy, and you're like, I think you need to do premarital counseling. And they're like, screw that. I don't need that. Why well, do you talk to somebody about my stuff? How would you use that lesson that you learned to kind of assist your friend in making a better choice opposite of what you did? Um, Just, um, just letting them know that, I mean, it does help talking – just talking about different things and then you can also you discuss things beforehand before it's an issue so it's almost like a um a relationship tune-up like you take your car and you don't take your car in to get fixed once it's fixed you do the maintenance no matter if that's what it is a relationship maintenance where you're doing the things to maintain it um to keep it up and running before you have an issue because sometimes when the issues are there, then you have a bigger issue and you really don't, I mean, yeah, you know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 I think, um, all right. So everybody listening, if you are about to get married, Chris says, go do some premarital counseling. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Keisha? What sound advice did somebody give you and you did the absolute opposite? Uh oh, we scared Keisha away. Uh oh, to piggyback off of what Chris said, um, I would have to agree to. Mine would have been not to have married my ex husband. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not funny. Stop I'm it. sorry. I'm sorry. That's not where well, I thought this was going. No, well, it's the truth. You know, I was warned um, not to marry him. Too. We did do counseling with the pastor, but coming from being a therapist myself, um, pastoral counseling is not enough. No offense to any pastors out there. If you have the training to not only do the pastoral part of counseling and do therapeutic counseling too, hey, that's what's up. But if you just, if, if the person you're getting counseling from is just, um, based on um pastoral counseling that's not enough i don't think it is and for me um we had pastoral counseling but in the midst of that it didn't it talked about a lot about the bible i knew clearly what my role was as a wife and i'm um i would say he knew what his role was too even though he didn't follow a lot of it but when it came down to other parts of a marriage like um, finances, um, communication, and all of these different pieces, um, we didn't get that through pastoral counseling. So I, just to piggyback off what Chris said, if I feel if we have, if we had the pastoral counseling as well as counseling with a professional counselor, I think, um, we probably wouldn't have got married from the get go. I'm not gonna say it would have worked. We probably would have saved time, energy, and monies, and just not got married at all. So um, I would, I mean, anybody can do whatever they want to do when it comes down to marriage. But my advice would be to get pastoral counseling and get professional counseling. If you can get that in one person, that's fine. But if not, definitely do both. Okay. And and my my story is kind of gonna intertwine with some of the stuff you said but we don't want to hear my story right now. We want to go to Nicole. 
give us give us your experience where somebody like like gave you some sound advice and you were just like screw that i'm gonna do it in the cole's way um so somebody told me what is it you catch more flies with honey than you do vinegar and it was regarding a work situation and i just had not been shown any grace in a work situation so i was pissed and angry and all of the above and I uh went into a situation and wanted that person to know that they were wrong and accountability and all of those harsh words so of course I went in there and proved my case and that put a big fat target on my back um and I ended up getting terminated which I'm grateful for unfortunately but um it just taught me that you know, ask for what you want in a, in a palatable manner, you're more than likely to get it or get some form of it. So it's all in the delivery as opposed to going in harsh with guns blazing. So I, I feel like I need to hear more about this story. Me too. <laughs> sounds so interesting. Set, can you kind of set this up for us because this sounds hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Well, one, it was um, one of our people you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And she hired me because we needed more of us in the, at the workplace. So I thought we were, we were good. Um, I come from a training background. So I went through training and I came out and she started saying like nitpicking on things that I didn't do. Well, the things that I didn't do were not in the training manual. So knowing that I'm very detailed, <clears throat> I took the training manual to her and said, can you please point out the date and time that we were taught this particular thing that you're trying to give me a ding for? Like, well, she went through the whole training manual and it wasn't there. So then I was, you know, okay, well, why am I being dinged for it if I wasn't trained for it? So that obviously rubbed her the wrong way because I proved the point and she had to remove whatever she was trying to ding me for. So then she kept coming back with multiple things like that. So about the sixth time, I just said, can we redo the training? Like whatever you're trying to ding me on is not in here. Can we, you know, blah, blah, blah. So we went back and forth like that for a while. And um, this is so horrible, but... <laughs> I was so stressed over this particular job and my family knew it and I would leave in tears and I would arrive in tears. So my family knew that I was highly upset behind the situation. Long story short, the phones were recorded. My family, one of my family's members called and said, is the bitch there? Is the bitch there? <laughs> Referring to this particular boss. Wow. Well, you know, I didn't respond. I said, the, you know, calls are being recorded. I kept saying calls be recording, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, she listened to the call, was highly pissed and terminated me for being on the phone. <laughs> wow. But it was kind of like karma, like you knew you were a bitch, so you yeah. just got told it's not by me. <laughs> yeah. So, but I do feel like if I, if I approach the situation better, you know, I, I, without being accusatory or just trying to find a better way, but at the end of the day, I wasn't supposed to be there anyway. So there I'm you go. cool with it. There you go. And we learn, we learn lessons to tell family, like, look, don't call me at work. Don't <laughs> right. just text me or don't wait till I get home. Wait till I go home. Um, oh yeah. But like you said, it was, it was a good indicator that you just weren't supposed to be there because if, if a situation like that, somebody would have just kept wa waiting and watching to find something. And so, that's exactly what she did. It's exactly yeah. what she did. She went, um, I went on vacation and when I came back, uh, the ter the actual terminating reason was I had mail on my desk while I was on vacation. What the hell? My exact response, like, well, how am I, I don't know what's on my desk because I'm on vacation. Yeah, that's weird. It was ridiculous, but Screw again, I people. wasn't to be <laughs> That's what I say. Screw them people. Exactly. Well, that's, those are good. So, so, so far we've learned to do marriage counseling or don't marry, don't marry the wrong person. Right. We learn marriage counseling. Don't marry the wrong person and be careful how you uh, interact at work. Right. Um, I think Darius is about to give us something that's really out the box, though. I am because I got two. One, a hard head, make a soft ass. I never <laughs> listen to people's advice. So I've always had to learn the hard way. Uh, and two, you'll never lose money 
never lose women chasing money, but you always lose money chasing women. And I didn't know that when I was younger. I was always trying to be out in the scene and do this and that. So I, I let a lot of opportunities pass me that I probably should have took. But now that I'm older, I follow that. Um, if it ain't about money, I don't really care about it. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's weird. And as far as the marriage counseling thing, it does work um, in some instances and in some it doesn't. I We went through marriage counseling and I'm still hard headed. So some of the things I learned, I forgot. So there's that. And then it's crazy, but I would do it again. I think there's a lot of value you can get out of it, but you do need somebody who's trained in multiple areas, not just um, the Bible aspect of it. Cause the, where we went, it wasn't just the Bible it was more life lessons and, and things of that nature. So, I mean, it, it works, but yeah, I, I've, I got to start taking more advice. That's my thing. I don't really, I don't know why I don't, but I don't. You think you know everything? I think it's a Sagittarius thing. Yeah. I'm going to have to look into that. Somebody want to help me um, understand. Ding, why. ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Can I share something, Darius, regarding Sagittarius? Look sure. at I got bars. <laughs> um, so Sagittarius, it. okay, yeah. So cat's out the bag. I'm into astrology and I've actually gone a little bit deeper than I probably should. So regarding the Sagittarius, Sagittarius is the, um, the teacher of the Zodiac. And because they are the teacher, they act like the teacher, like we know everything. So I need to tell you or teacher or show you everything, but they are not the last sign of the Zodiac. So their issue is to pause and realize that they have more stuff to learn. <laughs> true i'm always trying to learn um, i think I mean, we I do all are. Teach too much we all are but you are definitely the sagittarius is the teacher of the zodiac oh yeah i have my um apple on my desk right now um if you want to learn I'm, I'm willing to show you some things but no i, I think it's because where is this going there is huh what 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 happened no, go ahead what happened? what i do nothing what I do? Nothing. Go. Oh. Nothing. Nah. I just, I just, I think that's true. I think we are, um, it's a superiority complex. We have an ego that's larger than it needs to be. Um, yeah, get, egos get you in trouble. Let me tell you, people with huge egos, ugh. <laughs> I made a joke the other day. People didn't want to work with me in the beginning because I was like the Kanye West of podcasting. <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was, uh, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's not a bad, I mean, I, I just felt like I knew what I could do and given the chance to show it, people would see it, but people didn't want to give me the chance because they knew I was going to be over the top or crazy um, sometimes, but I can be reserved. You can be, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, people. Pay attention to yo. I wouldn't say check your ego. That's what somebody told me. That's the advice I never listened to. Somebody told me I always need to check my ego at the door, and I don't believe that. Wow. Um, Why not? Let's talk about that. Let's talk. Let's 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 bring Chris in on that conversation too about ego, about big ego. Hey let's, hey hey hey! You reminded me of a song. Go ahead. <laughs> my favorite song. No, I was no. <laughs> Checking it, um, checking the ego. I mean, it's nothing. To, well, I think it's uh, you got to have the confidence, and I think sometimes it gets blurred between confidence and then someone with a huge ego. But um, you gotta like know how to check it. But I think it's more so having the people around you that can like pull and rein you back in. Where okay, if you're confident, like my man, my man Darius, hey, he's confident in himself. And a lot of times that confidence can be threatening to other people. So then they perceive it as having a huge ego. But if you got the right people in your corner, that's going to like let you know that, hey, man, you need to tone it down. And you're more likely to listen to them. And then you can keep your ego in check like that. But um, I'm not a big believer in um, lightening, um, lightening your brightness to make everybody else feel comfortable. That's just me. But and I'm with you on that because ego, a lot of times, and I think it's more confidence versus cocky 
because you can be cocky mm-hmm. and not know shit, but you can be confident yeah. and know everything and be a, and and one way or the other, people are gonna perceive it like a lot of people perceive it as cockiness. And I don't think that's the thing. I think it's just supreme confidence. Like if you know what you can do and you know what you do well, why not? Now I'm not on the top of a mountain screaming out like I'm the best and I'm the shit, but I know, you know what I'm saying, what I can do. And there's a lot of people I know who can be more confident or should be more confident in what they can do. And I try to bring that out of them because like you said, you can't, like I don't want to water myself down for everybody else to feel fooled. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I hear you. So I guess it's my oh, that's all. That's it. Michelle, you're up. I'm up. I'm up. I'm up at the bat. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so <laughs> what had happened was so I was told I was told uh <laughs> uh it was a a a uh jeez. Just get it out. Spit it out. So, Spit it out. <laughs> a relationship <laughs> I should not have started. And I was told ahead of time, it's probably not a good idea. Like, let's look at what's going on here. This is probably not a good idea. And I was like, you're right. And I did it anyway. Um, so, to be fair, I agreed with the advice. I just, I just, I just did it anyway. Um, so what did I learn from that? Hmm. See, that's the thing, right? If you have lessons, the whole point of a lesson is to learn something. So when I asked myself, okay, what did you learn from that? Because it wasn't a situation where I thought the person was wrong who told me not to, or the couple people who told me not to. It wasn't a situation where I was like, uh, you're not, you're not wrong. I just did it anyway. So what does that mean? Is that like the whole definition of just being hard headed and think you know everything thing, or is it a definition of mm, I wanna try it anyway? Is it a definition of I just don't care? Because it ended horribly. The situation ended horribly. <laughs> and it's like, okay, now if the situation like that pops up again, what are you going to do? And I think that's where the learning is, right? If a situation like that pops up again, I'm not going to have to talk to people. I'm just going to be like, no, we're not doing this again. And um, I don't think I ever told the people who kind of warned me not to do it. So thanks, Nicole. (laughs) (laughs) What? Me? Uh, Thanks, Nicole. I'm sorry I didn't listen. I'm sorry I didn't listen. Sorry you had to deal with the headaches that came afterwards, but uh and and Keisha would have told me not to do it too if she would have known. Um but she didn't. So <laughs> but I know she would have told me not to do it too. So thank you, Keisha. <laughs> now, hey, not until it was too far gone. I know, hey. I know. And she was like, What? <laughs> what are we doing? Why would you do that? What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. So, okay. So woo, we're not going to stay in that space, but uh, yeah. And that's a part of growth, right? Admitting you were wrong. So let's talk about that. Like I, I admit that I was wrong. Like I did something. I know I should have did it. I did it anyway. And it did not end up good. So what about you all? We kind of talked about ego, but what about like times where you had to admit you were wrong? Are you somebody who can do that freely? And I'm going to start with Chris. Like, can you admit you were wrong when, when something happens? Um, no, I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better at it. I'm working on it. But um, I know for a fact, admitting that I'm wrong, um, no, nah, because I, I just... If it's something that if it's something that I wanted to do or I enjoyed doing it, and everybody said, Well, you shouldn't have done that. I was like, hey, well, I'm not gonna regret it or I'm not gonna think that I was wrong. Might turn out that I was wrong at the end, but I'm not um it's 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 difficult for me to admit that I was wrong. Why? Oh, I mean it's probably uh, probably the ego. Oh, it's, I mean, there we go. It's coming out there. 
<laughs> yeah, they, no, it's definitely the ego. But like I said, I am working on it, admitting that I'm wrong. And what I've been doing to help myself out is like if somebody brings something to my attention and um, I am, um, I'll try to put myself in their shoes and think about it from their perspective. And then I'll go, okay, well, maybe I did do something wrong. And if I did something wrong, I would admit it and I apologize. Okay. And then sometimes I'm like, nah, that person is just in their feelings. So no, nah, I didn't do anything wrong. Hmm. Nicole's smiling. You got something to say, Nicole? Nicole's our um, emotionally intelligent uh, coach there. <laughs> well, I'm laughing because I know Chris's sign and I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Oh, Gemini? she knows. I already, I already told, I already oh. told them. Like, I don't gave them a whole oh, okay. brief about oh, okay. you. But Gemini's, oh, okay. All right. they're very, very smart, very smart sign. So, Lord, I, no, no, no shade yeah. there at all. But they are definitely an, uh, how do you say it? Like a movable sign, you know, that like to see the truth from both sides or any sides or under and over. So all truths are all areas. So I could see where that would be somewhat difficult. <laughs> Okay, so you can, but it's not your default. How about you, Keisha? Can you admit when you're wrong? I I have no choice. I mean, my conscience will eat me up, and I have to make it right. So um, I will admit when I'm wrong. If I, oh, let's start with this. If I'm aware that I am wrong, then yes. I may not do it right away, but my conscience will eat me up to the point where, yes, I have to admit that I'm wrong and apologize. Okay. That was good. That was, how about you, Nicole? Um, I used to have a, a really hard time with it, but um, now that I've done a lot of work, I actually see some growth in admitting that I was wrong. So now when I change the perspective of that, um, I am more willing to learn the lesson and admit fault and move forward because I definitely was a finger pointer and not at myself. So now that I can, I look at myself and accept responsibility in any situation. So I'll acknowledge my responsibility in the situation. Okay. I like that. we got some really strong answers here. And Darius... Huh? Can you do it? Can you admit? What was the question? Wrong? Can you admit when you're wrong? <laughs> Darius ain't even look, Darius. <laughs> was I wrong? Yeah. Can you? Admit? Um. Can I admit I'm wrong? Nope. I cannot. Because even if I was wrong, I could have been right. Said I was almost right, so I was not wrong. That is not how I, this works, Darius. Why not? No. <laughs> I could have been right. It's no, a fifty-fifty no, opportunity. No, but you were wrong. So I need you. But to admit was it. I? Yes. How was I? Whose whose laws are we saying I was wrong? Mine, by? I said it. But how do you know I was wrong if I wasn't right? I but I was it. wrong to you. Nicole <laughs> might have thought I was right. Oh my gosh! Mm. Really, Darren? Mm. I'm just you? saying. I I mean, it's hard for me. I can do it, but the words don't flow. It, it's 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 hard. Are this you is, one of the? Hold on, you one of those dudes? You one of those dudes who are like? Huh? You're one of those dudes who've done something wrong and they won't say sorry, but they'll be like, you want something to eat? Or they'll just be texting you, hey, 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 what you doing? I'm about to go hey. to the kitchen, you need something to drink? That is not, no. Why not? I can't stand when guys do that. Like, dude. <laughs> I apologize. I just don't apologize profusely. Well, how, or do you apologize like, I apologize that you feel that I did that. Go. didn't there really go. go down that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I used to. I, know, um, that, that's me. I, I know, used I to. I'd be like, I'm sorry you felt I was wrong in what I said, but I meant what I said when I said it. I just didn't say it the right way I was supposed to say it. I'm sorry. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. But I'm, I'm better at apologizing. Um, because I had practice, because um, I'm often uh, doing something crazy or out outrageous, so I have to apologize for my actions to certain people. Um, if I feel it's warranted, I will apologize. But some people, um, uh, here's my thing: some people don't deserve that apology because they need to feel that energy. Um, 
even if I was wrong, I ain't sorry. Um, if you screwed me over, the way I might have got my exacted my friends it wasn't um, the right way, but it was my way. You got to feel me. But I do apologize. So let's yeah. not say I don't. And I'm getting better at it. It's a work in progress. Um, I wholeheartedly try to make sure if I wrong somebody by accident, uh, I do let them know I'm sorry. Okay. All right. I guess I'll I'm work. trying. You, you did. You did. Pray for me, people. I'm proud of you. Pray I'm proud of you. Keep me lifted in your spirits. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Do I, do I admit when I'm wrong? I'll admit when I'm wrong. Okay. There's, it's like two. It's two things. If you're coming at me and you're saying I'm doing something that's wrong and I feel that I'm not in the wrong, you're going to have to come with everything. Like, I need some peer-reviewed articles. I need some journals. I need some freaking proof where you can label it list by list. Okay, when this happened, this happened, this happened. Because we're going to have a debate. Like, I will. I have done PowerPoints on people. I have done read files on people. Like, because I don't like it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so how is that any work than what I do? Oh, oh, you don't want to get into her. She will send you a full PowerPoint with pictures, sound, I mean, movie, movie making, all sir. Of them. Are I you mean, hitting button the space bar when you uh mad? No, like, no, no. I'll dare you. <clears throat> and can I add that there will be zero uh spelling errors or Ooh, <laughs> right. she, oh you a grammar Nazi right. with it too. She all is that, all that. I mean, but yeah. I will say. Um, Michelle, when um, when you are wrong, because it's been times when you have went back and forth where I've tried to help you see when you were wrong in a situation, not with me, but with somebody else. And I mean, after a while and laying it out there and doing all this stuff, you know, you do come to a point if you are wrong, you're like, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, but it takes absolutely. a while, but absolutely. you will. So, yeah. I, I'll, I'll definitely stand down. If, if, yeah, because I know I don't know everything, and a lot of times when I'm doing something, I am thinking I'm doing it out of the best interest of whatever's going on or with the information that I have at that moment. So when somebody brings up new information or maybe tells me like you were you were acting out of emotion, and you might need to look at it this way, I I, I definitely stand down, but. <laughs> It's when I don't feel I'm wrong and you're coming at me, we're going to have a debate and it's not going to be, it's not, I'm not an easy, I'm, it's not easy. Like I've made movies on people, videos, like, movies? yeah. I want to see one <laughs> now. Like, I'm so I'm it. Hey, Darius, it's real good. She makes some good stuff now, but you know, it, it's going to make you feel crazy when you, if it's for you. It's like, oh, oh really? Remind me not to get on your bad side because I don't do need it. no... Uh... I'm a much better ally than an enemy. I'll tell you that. That's why I always come when you call. <laughs> <laughs> much better ally. Hey, Darius, you remember the last episode we did, right? And we was mm. talking about... Chris, you asked the question about um, something about the feds chasing or us and I say something about the other way around. Oh, the CIA. Who's mm -hmm. likely to have the CIA? Fight? That's what it was right there. See? Oh. But I will, Castle girl. I will uh, I will admit when I'm wrong. Um, It's just gonna, if I feel that it's, if I don't see it from the front end though, it's gonna be a conversation. It's never a conversation where I'm like I'm smug about it because I know I have blind spots and everybody has blind spots. I, I don't care how amazing you might think you are. Like everybody has blind spots and um, you don't see them. That's why they're called blind spots. So uh -huh. I think too, it comes down to who's the one bringing the information to you. And, and that's the next question I have when somebody's trying to give you advice, like, do you guys have a weighted scale on who's bringing that advice to you? Like, yes. Yeah. So oh, let, yeah, let's talk about it. So, who who would be you you know the ones you listen to and then you know people who you're like mm, I don't trust you to speak on that that with me. So I'm gonna start with Chris. You should always let's pay attention more to the message than the messenger, but sometimes the messenger you have to see like okay what is their reasoning for giving this advice. 
Are they looking out for your best interests? Or if it's something that's going to benefit them? So, and then also just think about for us in the past, hey, this person, some people give bad advice. And the people who give the worst advice are the ones who always want to give advice. I was like, look, man, your advice sucks, but it's not, that's not nice to tell people that, but why not? Sometimes <laughs> you said, why, why, <laughs> why not? <laughs> they need to know if your advice is shitty, I'll let you know your advice is shitty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, is it? I mean, like, you, they ain't gonna grow if you don't let them know. So, that's true. Right. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I mean, well, you don't want well, somebody I mean, out here I'm being not, Dr. Phil I'm and they full enough. Oh man, I ain't yeah, he's about... right. He is not tactful. <laughs> he will hurt somebody's feelings. I'm not tactful oh, either, but I you got to know. Yeah, yeah, but I'm now. I'm not going to purposely try to hurt. No. Well, now sometimes I may purposely try to hurt somebody's feelings, but if you're trying to help me out, and then now instead of taking advice, now I'm explaining to you look why you shouldn't give me this advice, and then that's a whole nother story. I mean, that's a whole nother area that we moving into but yeah it's just listening to the messenger and going going from there yeah and i think that's super important mm. especially word trying to figure out who you can trust because you might have some people in your circle i feel you who might feel not you. be <laughs> um looking out for your best interest they might be jealous you know what i'm saying or they might want to hold you back and here's another dynamic i want y'all to talk think about you might have people close to you who see you growing and see you excelling, but they know when you do that, you're leaving them behind. Mm -hmm. So they might not have the best interest or they might say stuff and they might not even do it like on purpose, but they still might say it, you know, just to kind of keep you where you're at. Cause they don't want to see you leave them. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. So how do you determine who those people are? Because they're in your circle. I have that situation kind of right now. Ooh, I hope they're not um, listening. I don't give a damn. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I've, I've been, I've been good at not saying nothing. But when we on the, in the same room or on the same whatever, I, I keep it business. You know, I come to do my job. We are gonna do the show, and I'm, and I'm out. It ain't no, the, the energy is different, and I, and, and that's how I tell the energy. Okay. When you bring a message to me, I, I look at your energy. If your energy's off. I'm not listening. If your energy ain't right, I can't hear you because I know where you're coming from when I feel your energy or how you say things or your your certain comments that you make in, in the prehand and then you try to give me a compliment, but it's backhanded um, or, or your advice is backhanded. It's like, you should do this because I know better um, and I don't believe that. I've seen a quote, you can't take construct constructive criticism of somebody who's never built anything. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right, give me. And I believe that. Like, how are you gonna tell me how to do my thing and you're not doing it? You're not in the in that realm. You're not, you know, what I'm saying on a level to where I can respect what you're saying because you haven't done it. You haven't been through it. And where I'm from, if you haven't done it, haven't lived through it, then how are you gonna tell me? It's like a white guy trying to tell me how to be black. That just it don't read. It's right. just it mm -hmm. doesn't make sense. I mean, unless you're well. I know some black white guys, so I can't say it totally, but it's just like, it just doesn't feel right from them. I'll say that. Okay. So Cause I know some white black guys. So, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a weird dynamic, but to make a long story short, we, I can't rock with her because you're trying to undermine what I'm doing by doing something else. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel right. Got you. And that makes so sense. now I have to keep you at a distance and everything you say at a distance. That makes So sense. I don't feed into it and I don't blow up or, you know, say something I might regret and can't take back. Oh, yeah. So I'm growing. See, I don't always. You just are growing. Off you are growing. I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. And how about you, Keisha and Nicole? Like, how do you determine who is the vessel or the messenger that you would listen to versus people who were like, okay, I hear what you're saying, but you know, nah. Um, where I don't share like <clears throat> my personal business with everybody. So, you know, 
the folks who I share my personal business with or the people that I trust do give me sound advice. Um, if it's somebody outside of that, I don't know. I probably would have to go on their vibes and dissect it and then take it back to the people I trust. Yeah. And we have to process it and, you know, figure out is this person coming from a place of love or they coming from a place of jealousy or what? So that's how I would handle it. And what about you, Nicole? That's a great question because, um, yeah, in my life experiences, I've had so much, uh, I one so much bad advice, like coworkers, friends, family, <clears throat> partners, that I used to take all advice and just, it ended up taking a tax, a tax on myself. So uh, then I went reverted and did the opposite. Like I take no advice from anyone else and I would search for the information on my own. Now I can hear other situations or I allow myself to hear other situations and take the meat and leave the bones regardless of who they are. So like if I'm listening to like a podcast or clubhouse or something else, I can listen to what applies to me that resonates with either my situation or lessons that I need to learn, then I can pick that up and just apply it to my life. But I'm not in a position now where I'll just say, hey, I need some advice on blah, blah, blah. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know about a, a specific person, more like situations. Okay. That'll take it on. And I think for me, and that's good. That's good because what you're saying is you kind of, you you allow advice to come from multiple areas and just take what you feel resonates or fits with your situation. And I think for me, um, oh, go ahead. I was going to share an experience like, <clears throat> um, this is probably too much of Nicole, but Oh, well, we're here now. Um, I don't have a relationship with my father and uh, I haven't spoke with him in some time. And out the blue, he reached out again on social media. And so at first I wanted to lash out like, why the heck are you contacting me, blah, blah, blah. Well, I sat with it. And during that time, I heard a bunch of people talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness was like the resonating thing. And so it, those types of things coming up and just right after that experience told me like, hmm, maybe I am supposed to be listening to and applying some forgiveness tactics. And so then I thought about it for a while and I'm like, hmm, is some forgiveness needed? Sat with it and that information didn't come from anybody that I knew. At the end of the day, no, not really. I don't need to forgive. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Forgiveness is probably <laughs> I was needed. Like, okay, what do I say right now? <laughs> <laughs> Forgiveness is probably like, un it's more like understand. I understand what went on and why I don't communicate, but I don't really feel an, uh, a need to engage. So, but that was an example of, you know, ad, quote unquote advice coming from a source that was not somebody that I specifically went to. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that makes sense. I mean, at the end of the day, you got to do what you feel is right. Like, even my example, knowing the advice was good advice, I still did it anyway. I feel that there were lessons that had to be learned. I mean, and damn it, did I learn them. Wow. Okay, can I also give the opposite? Um, that giving advice that's not listened to, like, you can do the whole, like, you so blah, blah, I can't believe, and blah, 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 and in turn, you can also feel um, like, why even ask that type of, why even ask my opinion if you're not going to take it, that sort of thing. But I truly believe that the lessons will come regardless. Um, you know, you obviously learn the lesson regardless of the advice that was given to you specifically, but I think that is with anybody, you know, if, you know, with kids, like, all right, if they're going to be hard-headed, they're going to learn the lesson. Right. And right. the bigger, you know, if we can learn that as human beings, we shouldn't feel so obligated to hold people accountable or force them to listen to us. The lesson will come regardless, regardless if you talk to them or not. So just be more trusting that it will. Yeah, that's true. And I think for me, I'm an extremely private person. Like, 
extremely private. Like half of my family didn't know I was married. The other half didn't know I, I got divorced. Like I'm, I think it's the Scorpio in my chart, <laughs> but no one knows what yeah. I do. No one knows what I do. I, I, I operate in the shadows. And, um, so when I do come to get advice from somebody, it's, it's pretty important because I trust that person on the level of I'm letting you inside like this inner circle of my life that no one has access to. The only time people have access to stuff that I don't want them to do is when I screw up really bad. If I screwed up really bad, then it's outside and everybody knows it. But I can't think of a time. I mean, there might be, I don't know where I screwed up like really bad and it came out of the circle, but I have such a tight circle that the people that I do talk to, I do feel that, um, what they say is out of love. And at the end of the day, I got my brother too. Like if I need to pull any information, I know at the end of the day, he's going to tell me 110% the truth. He is not going to care how he says it to me or how I receive it. But he knows when he's, I know when he says it, it makes sense. So, um, and kind of like what Keisha said too, if people give unsolicited advice, like people telling me, okay, you need to do this, that, and the other, I might take what they say, but I'm going to bring it into the circle of the people I trust and say, okay, I heard this. What do you guys think? And see what they say. And if they're like, that's garbage, then I'm like, all right, cool. But Darius too, what, what Darius said about trust and energy and having discernment. Like sometimes you have to look at, like, I don't have tight relationships with most of my family members. So if they came up and told me something, I'm going to be like, mm, let me talk to Keisha and Nicole. Because a lot of times family is not necessarily blood. Sometimes family is who you choose to be. And um, so I do think the advice that people give, it's just as important as the messenger who's bringing it. And we have to be aware of that. So we are approaching our hour. Um, we talked about examples of things that have happened to us where we should have taken the advice. Um, can we admit when we're wrong? And it looks like the females can do it, but the guys seem to have issues. What What is up with that? Like, the guys seem to have issues with admitting when they're wrong. Like, you guys are freaking weird. Men, I think, are weird in general. Like, I don't understand you all. But that's neither here nor there. Um, and we talked about understanding or having discernment on who's bringing the advice to you. So... If we had to leave uh, a nugget for people who are listening when it comes to unsolicited advice, advice in general, what would that be? And I'm going to jump to Chris first. Um, I would say that, I mean, first, like I said, I'm always listening to what they're saying, but then also thinking about who it's coming from. I mean, that's, that's the main thing right there. Um, you have to take heed to that because if you don't, then could find yourself in somewhere where you're taking some, you're taking bad advice. Right. So you always just got to take that step back. And what about you, Keisha? What, what would be um, information or a tip or advice, air quotes, advice that you would give um, anybody listening as it relates to this? Um, pretty much the same thing. Just, Take heed, be mindful of the people who's bringing the information to you. And um, before you just count it off, maybe run it by somebody because it might be something you need to take heed to. And sometimes um, it'll be a stranger that comes and just give you information and, you know, don't count it off. I mean, I wouldn't just count it off. I always take it back to my circle and, um, we're going to process it and see what's what, unless I know it's someone who's don't have my best interests at heart. So I would say to um, listen, if you feel like it's not something that's good for you and you know, it's not coming from a place of love, throw it away. If you feel like you're not quite sure, take it back to somebody you trust and process. It. Oh, that's good. That's good. And what about you, Nicole? Um, let's see, um, regarding taking advice, I want to share, um, Michelle, you and I had a conversation a while ago about ego and what the ego is. 
And the ego is there to protect our inner person, our soul from things that would possibly injure us. So when we notice that the ego is coming out or you want to act out of ego, then um, take a step and pause for a second. Like, is this ego or is this something else? And am I protecting myself from something else that could allow me to grow? So am I not taking this information because this person's, you know, not good enough, blah, blah, you know, you go down your list, or is it my ego? And if you can separate your ego from your soul, like, okay, wait a minute, do I really need to hear this information? Does it hit with some of the lessons that I've already learned? Have I heard this information before? Why does this keep coming up? Like, reevaluate the information that's coming to you and not dismiss it just because of your ego trying to protect you from, from, perceived fear or something else that's amazing that's awesome information and absolutely you have to check where that emotion's coming from because your ego is there to protect you and it you know yeah and it's definitely need i mean there is time when ego is needed you do need the protection sometimes however the majority of the time we allow our ego to run ourselves and it prevents us from growth true true there he is Oh, Darius. Ready this time. Um, <laughs> this time I'm ready. I would say just watch out for unsolicited advice. People who um, are quick to give you advice that you didn't ask for usually don't end up too well. Especially if they don't know the situation. They're just giving advice because it, it feels good. It sounds good in their head. It usually ain't the best. Yeah, that's true. And a lot of people... Oh, and drunk advice. Take drunk advice. Take if drunk somebody advice. Gives you, if somebody's drunk and they give you advice, take that shit and rhyme with it. I'm telling okay. you, drunk advice is some of the best advice. No, nah. oh, you got to take that and run. <laughs> yeah, that's what... Yeah, yeah, run. Yeah, I, uh, yeah I, I thought you were saying take them and run with the advice that they're giving you. I'm saying, no, I'm, no, I'm no, 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 no. Oh, but okay. there are some good... Okay, I, there are some good drunk wise men I've met in my lifetime some saged yes, yeah, whiskey. Yeah, I know a few as well. I trust them more than I trust people I don't know to give me advice. Yeah. And I think my my suggestion would be be open. Like, you want to be able to use your discernment, right, and make sure the source fits and that the people who are giving advice are doing it out of the right space, but be open to knowing that you're not always right. Like, right. it's okay. Like, we don't know everything. Like, I'm reminded, I wouldn't say daily. I'm reminded weekly that I, <laughs> okay, maybe every other day that I don't know everything. Um, and there's people who know more things in different areas, right? Um. I suck when it comes to expressing feelings. Like, I'm just not, that's just not my thing. Like, I really think you're cool. Like, I really <laughs> suck at it. So I have to turn to people who are much better at it. Like, okay, this is how I'm feeling. How do I say it? And Nicole and Keisha will kind of help me. So if you're feeling this emotion, how do you say it to that person? Cause I'm over here like, I think you're cool. Um. That's it. Like, that's all I got. So you have to be open to take advice when it's given, when it's accurate, when it's helpful, but also understand that you don't know everything. Um, and when you're wrong, it's okay to admit that you're wrong and learn from whatever happened. Like, don't just close it down, close it off. This happened. I screwed up. Learn from it because you don't want to repeat it. Because let me tell you, some lessons I've learned, like that junk comes right back around if I don't get it. And I think that's life in general. Like if you don't get it the first time, you're going to find it again. And a lot of people end yep. up dating the same person over and over again, just in a different body. Like it's ridiculous. I'm like, well, damn, I've never met you, but you act just like dude from yacht, whenever. And here's a key. If you start listening to the same songs, that you were listening to when you were going through hell with somebody else, you don't messed up. <laughs> I just used this playlist for a whole nother dude and it fits like, you don't messed up. You didn't learn. So, um, or it's just a fire ass playlist. I, mean, I do have, I do have fire. Playlist. I do. <laughs> I legit have Got a playlist for every chapter. 
I have every, yeah. I have a playlist for every chapter of life. Like I do. And you can definitely Tom's tell, in the key of my shit. I'm saying <laughs> you can know what I'm going through in life. If you, depends on what music I'm listening to. Like my kids picked it up. They're like, Oh, she's mad. Somebody done pissed her off. She's listening like to Tupac and Biggie. Those are my dudes. But, um, you can tell what I'm going through by what I listen to. So, yeah. I don't even know how we got here. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, the playlist. Like, if you listen to the same songs, you didn't learn the lesson. You didn't learn the lesson. So, I think the takeaway is learn the lesson. Right? No? Don't right. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I All right. Otherwise, it'll keep presenting. <laughs> and some of these lessons are tired. I don't want them no more. Like, dude, I'm good. Like, I'm good. So... We already know where to find Keisha and Nicole, um, but Darius, let everyone know what you got going on. And again, like, tell them about this new new uh, project you got that you just announced today. Uh, so uh, did a little venture with a company up in New York. They do a lot with um, like Paramount. They got a lot of clientele. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm promoting this new movie called The Commando with Michael John White and uh, Michael Rourke comes out on DVD soon. I will be having a giveaway of 10 codes to get an advanced copy. But you got to watch the show to get it. Um, but it's dope because I'm promoting a movie. Awesome. That's <laughs> so awesome. That is I awesome. get to do a live read. I was like, I'm giddy because I, I went to school for this. So doing a live read is like a pinnacle of your show is doing some shit that you ain't supposed to be doing. Um but it just feels good. So working with them, they're called Map 360 Collective out in New York. Um, I got Roger Ortega, who's a singer from New Jersey, coming on this Wednesday. So I'm looking forward to that. You can catch us on Facebook at What The Stuff Podcast because Mark Zuckerberg is a dick. Um, <laughs> there's no way around it. He just won't want me to be great. He won't let me get my cuts on. Um, but on Instagram, it's What The Shit Podcast. And the underscores between podcasts and shit. Um, we'll be live. We live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I got to give a shout out to my people, Courtney and Chris, uh, for putting up with my craziness and me texting them at all hours of the night because I don't sleep because I'm always working. So, see, Keisha and Nicole, at least I'm not that bad. I will, well, you, I will send you a crap load of crap. Oh, wow. You know, I got a cut off the house, so I'm going to sleep after. <laughs> <laughs> sure. yeah i don't sleep i'm always up working doing a promo or or uh social media or something i'm just i'm just trying to grow and the only way i, I don't know how to do that is to work but thank you for having me sleep's overrated anyway sleep's overrated anyway yeah you sleep when you die well even then i might not i might just come back and work no, I know you do the most healing when you sleep. Just that's saying. True. That's true. Who wants to heal? I mean, Who wants maybe, I, want, maybe I like my demons. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yikes. I need that. Um, there's a sound that's like, oh, I need that right I'll, now. I'll find what? it. I'll find it. I'll find Who it. Who wants to not heal? <gasps> heal. Clutching the pearls. Clutching the pearls. Drake, heal. <laughs> Ringing my ears, not heal. No. I heal <laughs> every day, every day, <laughs> every day. All right, Chris, what about you? Tell them, tell them about what projects you got going on. Oh, I got a couple things. I'm not um ready yet to announce them, but you can find me on Instagram. Um, it's byob underscore lifestyle. Um, on Instagram. Um, just got that page up. Got a few things I'm working on that I'm gonna start releasing different content. And um, once we get, um, let's say, a few more weeks, I'll be ready to discuss it a little bit further. All right. That sounds good. So this is where we uh, part ways because people have stuff to do, right? And streets to get into. It is Friday night. So uh, I want everybody to uh, keep an eye out. We got one more in-between episode, which is going to be interesting. It's going to be talking about the... Uh, online dating experience and everything that goes on with that um yeah i'm just gonna leave that there so <laughs> uh, you guys can find us our website the looking glass fans instagram and facebook the looking glass podcast and if you are interested the 30-day challenge is about to gear back up 
for another round for a season two. So if you want to go to www.c4challenge.com, you can sign up there. And yeah, so you guys take care, stay safe, and be well.